This is the point of view. Welcome to our special show tonight. This show brings you the right guests. We ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. It's your leading current affairs show on television. My name is Bernard Avle. It's interactive. That means you can get in touch in a number of ways. If you're watching on Facebook, you can send a comment on the conversation that's going on underneath. If you're watching on television, we have a WhatsApp number where you will be able to send your comments. And of course, we're on Twitter as well, hashtag point of view. We have a big show for you tonight. So it's a show that's trying to address issues affecting a lot of us in different ways. I have a special guest. When we come back, I'll tell you who he is and why this is an important show. So the point of view tonight will be interviewing one of the only two heads in Ghana. Yes, you heard me right. The only two heads in Ghana. There are director generals, there are lots of CEOs, but there are only two heads. One heads the civil service, the other heads the local government service. Well, I'll be talking to the latter. He has over 50,000 people working under him. Some of them work under the regional coordinating councils, and the rest are in the 260 MMDAs, Metropolitan Municipal District Assemblies. Now, he is Nana Dr. Atu Arthur, or Dr. Nana Atu Arthur. He'll clarify <laughs> that for us because he's also an engineer. But tonight we'll be talking about quite a number of things. So people are wondering, how come our markets are so crowded and so dirty? How come people are setting up lorry stations at the wrong place? How come we don't have clean gutters? What's happening with sanitation in our communities? How come we don't have enough police? What's happening with our schools? Well, if we are decentralizing properly, the people who are supposed to deliver those services to you work under this man. He's not a minister, but trust me, he wields a lot of influence because they build the capacity of the assemblies, whether they are planning officers, whether they are budget people. Whoever works in an assembly whose capacity needs to be built or who delivers a service directly to you somehow reports to this man. And tonight we're going to talk to him about how to bring proper decentralization in local governance to your doorstep. We'll be happy to read your questions for him. Nana, great to have you on the show. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening. I need some education. Is it Nana Dr. Atu Arthur or Dr. Nana Atu Arthur? Uh, it's Engineer Dr. Nana Atu Arthur. You know what it <laughs> means? Um, I'm an engineer by profession. Okay. And I did a PhD in Germany. In Germany, when you do a PhD and the area is not in the profession that, like the engineering that, I was your engineer doctor. Okay. But if I had done a PhD in engineer, I would have been doctor engineer, so so and so. You so know, you are so engineer, engineer doctor. doctor Nana so Nana is your name, not your title. It's my name. It's not a title. I was named after my father's uncle. So I'm Nana Atuata. Is this the same Nana Atuata who used to be MP for KEEA? Same Nana Atuata who first started as a district chief executive under President Kofu in 2001. And then from 2005 to six, mm -hmm. I was a deputy central regional minister. Mm. Six to nine, I was the regional minister for central region. Wow. And then MPP lost power in 2008. I went to Germany for my PhD. I came back in 2012. I contested as a member of parliament for commander Negro for Abrim mm. and won. Wow. For the 2012 elections. Okay. And then between 2013 and 2017, I was a member of parliament for Commander Negua for Abrim. This is the place that Atukwashi. Atukwashi, Dr. Ndu. Dr. Paukisi Indu. Exactly. And, and then now Mills. Now Mills, yes. Wow. And then uh, Dr. J.S. Annan. It's a very important constituency in Central Region. It is. If you know about Elmina, you know why it is so important. So are you it, from Elmina? It, yeah, my mom is from Elmina, my dad from Abrim. So KE, Commander Negua for Abrim. So I am from Commander. So is it four Abrim. towns or what? Commander? Four traditional areas. Commander, Commander traditional area, capital Commander. Elmina traditional area, capital Edna. They celebrate the Bakatui festival. Exactly. Interesting. Iguafo traditional area, capital Iguafo. Abrim traditional area, capital Berase. Oh. These are four traditional areas. Abrim. So Abrim. there's new Abrim too. New Abrim is in Eastern region. region. I see. I'm talking about the original Abrim. Interesting. So you are a strong central region man. Cent strong key, strong central, strong and, and also strong decentralization local government guy. Exactly. What's your PhD in? Uh, my PhD was on local government. The, the title was The Unfinished Business of Decentralization. Can, uh, I, can I have that? 
political accountability of local government. Can you autograph it for me? Of course, I need to do that, Ben. Wow. So I'm taking the book before we ask the question. So that when he doesn't like the questions, he will still. I won't, you, you take no, I won't take the book from you. <laughs> it's it's from me to you. So there you have it. Yes, the unfinished business. From of Arthur to Bernard, with compliments. Yes. I think I should interview more people who write books. Yes. The unfinished business of decentralization. Political accountability of local government in Ghana. Stephen Nana Ato Arthur. Super. So you are the head of the local government service. You're right. There are two heads in Ghana. You are the second one. You're right. Who is the head of local government service? What does he do? Uh, what does local government service do? Mm. In the local, I mean, call it a basic local parlance. Mm -hmm. Local government service is civil service at the local level. In the sense that Ghana wants to have one civil service. And um, civil service was divided into two. At the national level, the uh, ministries, uh, departments, some agencies, they are the civil servants. At the sub-national level, that's the regional coordinating councils and the MMDA, the 16 RCCs and the 260 MMDAs. All the staff who work at this subnational level belong to local government service. service. And let me just the, uh, some uh, with some exception. Mm -hmm. When we are the RCCs, mm -hmm. the regional ministers and their deputies, they are not staff of local government service. They report to the so, press. So what you're saying is up there. So the membership is there. So you have the office of the head of local government service, regional uh, coordinating council, exactly, including the decentralized regional departments, MMDAs, Metro Municipal Assemblies. And then at the Metro Ministry Assembly level, the chief executives report to the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development. Okay. The staff, we are talking about from the coordinating director to the cleaner in the MMDs, they are local government service staff. The RCCs, from the chief director to the last person, they are local government service. So just staff. like the ministers are appointed by the president and then the chief directors and everybody else is appointed by the head of civil service, also for you, the MMDA, also the DCE, for example, is appointed by the president for now. Exactly. And then the rest, you appoint them to work under the MM. They are recruited by local government service and the staff of the service. Some are appointed to become, for instance, acting coordinating directors. You know, they are appointed by the head of service. Mm. But all, most of the staff, you know, recruited through the mail and they rise. To so when we say regional coordinating council, what's that? Uh, previously, we used to call them... Uh, regional administration. Mm -hmm. You know, at the regional level, there are regional ministers representing the president. Mm -hmm. They coordinate harmonized plans of the various districts, and the regional ministers are in charge of the DCs within their jurisdiction. So, when we talk about the regional coordinating council, mm. it's a body at the regional level that coordinates activities in the uh, lower level. The lower, lower level, I'm referring to the MMDAs within the Algeria region. So, for instance, when you go to Central Region, mm -hmm. uh, Central Regional Recruiting Council is uh, chaired by the Honorable Regional Minister, Honorable Kwame Duncan. And he has a deputy, Honorable Ajay Bafo. These two, they are government appointees, representing the president at that level. We have the chief director, a staff of the local government service, to the last person, the messenger there. And then you have the council that have... Uh, that has a number of representatives. Mm. For instance, all the presiding members in the uh, MMDs within a particular region, they are part, are of, the part of the regional coordinating council. council. The chief executives are part so of the So it's like an organization, a, a body that governs the regions. At the regional level. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to use the word govern. In other areas, Kwame Adan Conference Honorable will be called a governor. In other jurisdiction, at that level, they are called governors. In our aspect, in our case, we call them regional ministers, ministers. And other, but they are governors. So they govern the region. So we have 16 of them because we have 16, 16 RCCs. And we have 260 MMDAs. Wow. Yeah. Is it, 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 what is the, is that an optimum number? Is no. it, do we need more or do we need fewer? Oh, that one is debatable. I believe that uh, that would be a very good question to the minister for local government. They decide that. Exactly. So you, when they, so we have six new regions. You have to provide training and staff 
for the assemblies within these new regions. You're right. As per Section 51 of the Local Governance Act, mm -hmm. Act 936 of 2016, mm -hmm. Section 51, the object of the Local Government Service is to secure effective administration and management of the decentralized local government system in mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. When the MMDs are created, staff need to work there. And so for effective administration and management, the staff are to be provided in these MMDs and the RCCs. If you care to know, just not quite long ago, the president and um, a team, including Honorable Dambuki, Honorable Minister uh, Alima Mahama, myself, we taught the new regions. Mm -hmm. At the RCCs, we need to provide staff so that they will be able to ensure effective administration and management of the decentralized local government system in Ghana. Mm. And for that matter, if you went to any of the RCCs, the six, we created six regions recently. The regional collecting director, the regional budget analyst, the regional economic planning officer, regional director agric, mm -hmm. regional environmental officer, and others. Mm. We need to pose them there to ensure that uh, there will be effective administration at that level. So what kind of staff work in these district assemblies? Because we, we know the MC, that's have, all we know. We have a lot of professionals. Like who? We have administrators headed by the regional or the coordinating director. Mm -hmm. At that level, we call them the chief directors. Mm -hmm. We have budget analysts. We have development planning officers. We have environmental health officers. We have department of agri, in the sense agri officers, human resource manager, procurement officers, and others. Really? Yeah. Are these people working in the metropolitan, municipal, or district? All over MMDs. So if I take Adenta, if you take Adenta as a municipality, good. If they, they have that, all these things you've mentioned. Yes. If you take Adenta, really? Yeah. Because today I was interviewing the MC, they can't even get land for a bus stop a, a lorry station in school junction. They don't have a market. They, they want to do PPP. We don't know what they are doing. They don't. Oh, you I don't mean, know what they are doing. In terms I of, thought you said you spoke. Yes, and he's telling me that they, they can't get the land because there's nobody willing to give them land. So if there's a planning officer and they are people who've been working for the past three years, why are they struggling to get a space for a trotter well, station? Is that is that we can't get land? That's an example. No, but let me find out. We can't get land because you want to get it free or so let me explain. So the school junction area, there's a big road. They are doing the road. The sellers have taken over the construction site. The trotter that doesn't have a place to park. So it's bizarre. The guy can't even work. And I called the MC and asked him, how come trotter in my job at Jengano School Junction don't have a lorry station? He says, I'm looking for land. I can't get. <laughs> I've been looking for land for the past no, um, two years. Let me That's what that. the DC told uh, Adni the, Noy, the MC. Adumwa. That's the, what he told me the, this le, morning. Le, le, let me say that I know Nino very well. The dean of uh, MCs in the Greater Accra. Oh, so he's a big man. He's a very hard working guy. He said he can't get land. No, I, I'm not privy to I you. interviewed a man. Yeah, but what I'm saying is this. Uh, are we looking for land free of charge? He wants to even whatever. I say he can't get. No, assembly can go out there, buy land to use for assembly work. If you are able to be in a smaller community and then you're able to talk to or you're able to engage mm. a chief, and a chief says, uh, for the fact that I want to use this for this project or that, I'm giving this uh, piece of land free of charge. It is there. But assemblies can also he can't get. in Accra. Adenta, he can't get land. Well, I don't know Adenta too well. But so is it so when you go to Adenta, yes. your earlier question, yes. you get a coordinating director, and uh -huh. I know you have I know Felicia. You have head of works in your Maxwell, mm -hmm. you have HR, HRM, a human resource no, manager. manager. You have procurement officer. All in this Adenta small Adenta. Every assembly we have this Do they have key. a planning officer? Yes, development planning officer. Yes, they do. What work do they do? Development planning, what work do they do? You have to plan the uh, assembly. But the place you need to collect. No all these perimeter areas in no. Adenta, Ashaim, 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 no. and there's no planning going on. You People are building hostels and inviting Ghana water to bring water. Ghana water says we don't have any plan for you. They're asking for electricity. Electricity company say, oh, you didn't even tell us we were building, so now we have to bring a new transformer. So you this know, planning officer, what are they doing? They are in charge of 
gathering reliable data uh -huh. for planning and budgeting. You know that if you have a, in a municipality mm. and you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You understand? The general planning officers are doing very well. And with the fiscal planning officer, the fiscal planning officer used to be those is what you call the town and country planning officers. Town and country planning officers. Uh, on that today, LUSPA, they transferred, you know LUSPA, largest yes. special, special planning authority. authority. They are civil service. So, a, so service. a planning officer in a place like Amasaman or Adenta, right. who would he submit his plan to and who is, supposed to, who is supposed to implement it? The assembly implements plans of the various... Uh, uh, Does it include special planning? Special planning, yes. Is the but the chiefs are sending land without recourse to no, the so, planning officers. Yeah, the planning officers can engage a chief and say that within our development plan, this area cannot be sold. This area is earmarked for a school. It's... The Mo old sir, most of the peri-urban places in Accra, mm -hmm. I'm starting from Ningo Pram Pram, moving to Shai Usudoku, to Adenta, to Trobu, to Amasaman, all the way to Nglesha Manfro, haphazard buildings. Gutters, a lot of the roads are in more trouble. Mm -hmm. Most don't have police stations. Most of them don't have water. Most of them don't even have lorry stations. All these places are in greater Accra region. You are telling me they are planning officers. What can they do? They are planning officers. But, but what, say, why, why are you let, no, let me say that some of the issues that you are raising, they can be beyond the assemblies. For instance, mm. if you talk about water, it's not a decentralized uh, agency. Ghana Water is not a decentralized agency. Mm -hmm. It's a centralized one. And so assemblies need to engage Ghana Water if they want to um, have what you call a service mm -hmm. plot, a service land. Service, meaning that having the nice streets or roads and then provision of water, electricity and others. Those are what we call the service plots and others. Mm -hmm. The assemblies need to engage... Uh, the Ghana Water Company mm -hmm. Limited, Community Water, if you are in the rural areas that we need to bore, uh, sink boreholes and others. So that can, assembly cannot do it. And that's why we, we have something we call inter-service collaboration or inter-agency collaboration. What can we do together to ensure that Adenta becomes the Adenta that But in the ideal situation, do these people not have to follow a plan? Because people will come and say, well, we've built the estate, there's no road. We build the estate. We don't have access to water. So they are now going to Ghana Water and saying, give us water. Should it not be the other way around that? Should it, we should demarcate it, it because private people are doing this. Go to Apollonia and It should places. have been the other way around. So it means we, guys are not working. Now guys are working. But some of these areas had been there long before even these assemblies came into being. So it's so like... Kataman, so Amasama and Kataman, Amasama and They've always had assemblies. No. Yes, I agree with you. But some of these places, the developments had been there and now trying to make sure that things are sanitized. It will mm. take us some time. What I would be against is that new areas today, mm -hmm. we didn't plan before we start uh, developing. And then you develop the areas and come back to say that we, there should be a road here. No, those should be there. That's the new, if the virgin areas of today, we need to make sure As that. As you speak, there are many houses without toilets. In fact, when you look at the district league table, they have the so-called open defecation uh, rankings. Even in Accra, yes. there are houses without toilets. Yes. If assemblies are working, if the people you put in these districts and municipalities are doing their work, how can you have houses without toilets? Are you talking about houses that were recently built or houses that have been there for the past 40, 50, when 60 years? Never? No. Buildings that were... Isn't, isn't inspection and part of the, the job? Is it only new buildings? Inspection is part of the job. We are saying that, look... And enforcement of local bylaws. Yeah, I agree with you. Enforcement is the key. Mm -hmm. If we don't enforce our bylaws, mm -hmm. uh, some of these things that we are talking about will be there. And they will turn out to be a kind of a canker. You know, I believe that we should be able to enforce our rules. We be, should be able to enforce our bylaws. Buildings without toilets. Today... In this age, mm -hmm. the role of the assembly is to ensure that we monitor all these burdens with that. Give the ultimatum. In this burden, we give you the next six months. There should be a toilet in this house. If you don't have, if you are not able to construct a toilet in your house here, mm -hmm. the assembly will just 
get you, you know. So how do you ensure that your assemblies are doing this? Is there a system of a test? Who, who monitors? Is he, who monitors these things? Is he, uh, the assembly system is a bit hierarchical. Mm -hmm. In the sense that you start from the um, lower level up to the level of a unit committee. Mm -hmm. We report to area council. Area council gets to uh, MMDAs at the metro municipal district assembly level. Mm -hmm. We have regional quoting councils that are responsible for backstopping, meaning that there are things going on in KE, Central Regional Coaching Council. We have that level, that area, I mean that level, that should be able to monitor what goes on in the MMDs. Mm -hmm. And then our staff, from the RCC level, it comes to Office of Head Local Government Service, that we have a department called PPBME, poli uh, Policy Planning, planning uh, Budgeting, Monitoring, Evaluation. They are responsible for you know, also looking at what is going on or monitoring what is going on at the RCCs. Mm. Yeah. So, yes, that is the way it is. And I can tell you that how we actually ensure that the assemblies are implementing what they are required to do is mm. now the system we have brought into what we call the performance contract system. Performance contract? Yes. Assemblies today... The coordinating director. They all sign performance contract. Exactly. So when was the last time you sacked somebody for for for? <laughs> is, this, is, it, is this contract signed by the whole body managing the district or at, individuals? At the MMDA level, the coordinating director, who is the head of administration, represents staff uh -huh. of that municipality or that district, mm -hmm. signs a contract with the chief executive, who is representing the president at that level. Mm -hmm. When we come to RCC level, mm -hmm. the chief director represents the staff, signs the contract with the regional minister, represents the president at that level. And 2018, for instance, the key P KP, so called key performance areas innovation and sanitation, innovation and local economic development, innovation and workplace environment, and then innovation and internally generated revenue. These were four key areas that they sign performance contract. I can tell you that, look, we are talking about Ghana Beyond Aid. Of course, president at his level will talk about Ghana Beyond Aid. At my level at the head of local government service, we're talking about Adenta Beyond Aid. We are talking about Medina Beyond Aid. Because the conglomeration of the 260 MMDAs constitute Ghana. So they can do IGF without needing You need to from. improve upon your IGF so that if the DACF, your share has income, you'll be able to work. And that is a Do you think Accra and Kumasi and Tamale and Takra, they still need DACF? Looking at the vast revenue potential. But looking at the vast revenue sources mm. that we have, if we're able to work very effectively, efficiently, at a point in time, I believe that some of these metros should be able to win themselves. Yeah, long, it's long overdue. Of this, you, but you know London. But you know how much London raised from just traffic, traffic offenses in I think 2013 over seven million pounds. Uh, I'll come to that. But let me also say that anytime this argument comes up, when I meet uh, Mayor AMA and other areas, they also talk about the waste in Accra. Are we really paying for the waste that we generate? We don't. I Who's mean, supposed to implement that? Isn't it them? Is it me? Yeah, but then look, you and I sitting here, a burden like this, somewhere you pay over 5,000 Ghana cities at property rate. In Ghana, 100 or $1 million property. Mm -hmm. They are not collecting. People are paying. It's look, your people. It's not yeah, but you give them a bill of 5,000 Ghana cities. They say it's too much. We won't pay even thousand Ghana. But you have been given authority to implement laws. We are in fact I have a friend, Ken Thompson. He says he said on this program mm -hmm. that if you come and collect the property tax for a year, nobody has even gone nobody to Nobody has house. been there. So your people can't be sitting and telling no, us that no, they no, are not paying. No, is he so all the things you are saying about the issue of property rate, refuse, 
your assemblies are ineffective. I wouldn't see their... To implement the policy of Accra the Clean City in Africa, how many sanitation officers do you even have in these assemblies? No. To we, even implement this policy? We have sanitation officers. How many? We go to AMA here, we get a waste management engineer, we get an environmental health analyst, about six of them. We have... For the whole AMA? Yes. But how big is the AMA if you say... Environmental uh, health analysts. If you slide they are, into pieces. Of course. They are analysts. Which is even not a good thing anyway. Uh, are, we are we debating that one? No, or? let's keep going. So you're saying <laughs> you have enough... Because people said, for example, that there was... No, uh, I think that we need more of environmental health officers. Those who have graduated from schools of hygiene. They are the ones that previously we used to use them for what we call summer salmon. You know, and, yeah, and you've stopped employing them. Uh, we, are, we have not stopped. Even this recruitment that we just uh, mm. completed, we've recruited some of them. But we still have some at home that we need to get to them recruit. employed. Yes. Okay. We'll take a break. This is Nana to our first turn on the point of view. We're talking uh, essentially local governance in Ghana. He's the head of the local government service. We're trying to ask him what's going on. Why are so many towns poorly planned? How come the city is not as clean as we expect it to be? How come we don't have lorry stations for simple trotters? Why is it not firing people enough? We'll also talk about whether voting for MDCs will really improve things. And of course, he's giving some people a hard time. He says they want to run for politics. They should get out of the local government service. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the point of view. So, is governance working at the level you live, your assembly or your district? Is the refuse being collected? Do you have proper roads? Do you have proper security? A lot of these things fall within the remit of local governance. And my guest is the head of the local government service. He recruits and trains people who deliver service to you from environmental services to health services at the local level. Nana Tuatha. He has 50,000 people working under him. He's a big man, I'm telling you. <laughs> and he's here to tell us more about what he's doing. So in the past week, you've been in the news. You've been interdicting people. I'm told about three people have had letters written to them asking them to step aside because they have gone to contest in primaries. Why are you doing that? Uh, let me say that I am not doing that as Dr. Atuata, the local government service. Mm. We work in a service that are governed by rules and mm. regulations. Um, in Ghana here, our primary law is the 1992 constitution. And please give me the chance to quote, quote <laughs> Article 94, 3B. Mm. Article 94, 3 says, a person shall not be eligible to be a member of parliament mm -hmm. if he, let me uh, jump the A and go to B, mm -hmm. is a member of the police service, mm -hmm. the prison service, the armed forces, the judicial service, the legal service, the civil service, the audit service, the parliamentary service, the Saskar service, the fire service, the customs excise and preventive service, the immigration service, or the Internal Revenue Service. 13. The local government service is not here. Good. But go to Article 190 of the 1992 Constitution, Chapter 14 of our mm -hmm. Constitution. Uh, at a time when this Constitution uh, came into force, mm. there wasn't any local government service. Okay. But the civil service here. And you go to uh, 191 D, mm -hmm. it tells you, such other public services as parliament may by law prescribe. Okay. The local government service by law, parliament prescribed from the civil service. Mm. And so anywhere you see the civil service that you don't find local government service, push local government service in where the civil service is. That is the first thing. Number two, in the year 20... 16. Mm -hmm. Closer. Closer is civil and local government service staff association, association of, of Ghana. Ghana. Mm -hmm. They went to court, that is Supreme Court, with some issues. They, first of all, they said whether or not on the true 
and proper interpretation of the constitution, mm -hmm. members of the civil service, the local government service, have the right mm -hmm. to contest elections or join political parties and hold executive positions in political parties. This is closer. Closer to civil and, and local government, government staff. Staff Local Government Service Staff Association of Ghana. The Supreme Court ruled that yes, everyone has a right to join a political party, but there are limitations. Apart from this exclusion from Article 94.3, the ruling came as this on a true and proper interpretation of the Constitution, a member of the civil service or local government service has a right to join any political party or his or her choice. However, such a person does not have the right to participate overtly, overtly, openly. So you can have a party card, but you can't run for position. Exactly. Overtly, you cannot be seen like a Tuata is MPP, Amma is NDC, Kwesi is CPP, PPP, whatever. But you're MPP. Of course. Somebody who had <laughs> been, no, no, somebody who had been a DC, a minister, MP, okay. of so course, but I can tell you that mm -hmm. the last two and a half years since I was appointed head of this service, uh -huh. I'm happy I'm before you today one on one. But I thought that that used to be on radio MPP and DC matter. Don't do today, that. where I am, I cannot I overtly, I cannot be seen to be doing A, B, C, D. You understand? I am heading an organization where the actors belong to multiple political parties and that i cannot be seen to be championing a political party so when you wrote to those three persons and asked them to step aside it was in line with this interpretation in line with this and there's a precedence you know but let me come to that first mm -hmm. there are three of them mm -hmm. two contested the last primaries of ndc mm -hmm. two uh, Alhaji Mazu Abubakar, mm -hmm. who works at Busa South National Assembly as antenna auditor. Yes, there you have it. Alhaji Mazu Abubakar. Oh, great. Your letter is there. We have everything. Contested Pru West for NDC. For NDC. So you, you say you should go home? Interdiction. Not yet go home. It's an interdiction. There's, the, A the, process is being exactly. initiated to the prove. The council, you know what? It is only the council. That, that can dismiss. I get it. Management, you can only... But what if you lost the primaries? Can't you come back quietly? No, no, no. But how can you? Overtly, you already displayed okay. your podcast. So that's Alaji Mazu. Mazu. The second the next one. one's Alexander Hedido. He's a Kasana Nankana. Also NDC. Also NDC. Conte Alexander Ata 2A. Contested in Swaman. Swaman, Western Region. Western Region. Then we have one MPP, Roland Insobila Abiri. He's an assistant engineer at Kasana Nankana Municipal Assembly. Roland Insobila Abire. Abire. Insobila. He's, an, he's MPP. He's MPP. And you've interdicted him too. Why? Why? Is it, would you have laws for No, I'm just people? asking, just to be no, clear. No, but your question is that you're telling No, best so people know that you are not. Three. Playing. There are three. So, Oboha, Boha. No, I mean, we should be fair to everyone. Because people send me pictures of people like Stephen Amwa, who's a, a Maslock. And they showed his tractor, he, and they said he's campaigning. He, 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 he. I'm, I'm, no, this is what people send to me. So no, let me let me explain. Yes, Sinapia is not a staff local government service. Yes, he's not a, a staff. He, of, but he's a public servant, isn't he? Yeah, but I don't control the public service. But the government and the, the the structure must be seen to be working across. No, you see, if we're talking about CLUSAG, what I earlier on alluded to. If you talk about local government service, where Atwata is a head, mm -hmm. I cannot jump across that I'm going to fish out Steve Namwa who works with Mazu. No, but for the sake of, are not I'm not saying you should do it, but for the sake of consistency and fairness. But what is the law? Who, 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 so I, so just be clear. So if you're in a civil or local government service, you can't do overt politics. Exactly. But if you are in the public service, as maybe Director we, of National Service no, Secretariat, you no, can do it. You know, public services. Go to Article 190 of our constitution. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of services that constitute public services of Ghana. Mm -hmm. I am a head of just a small one, local government service. Mm. I'm working within the laws, within the local government service. I cannot go outside the local government service chasing people who don't work with the local government service. I get you. So you have to be your limit. Exactly. Even public service, we have a chair. A very competent lady, Mrs. Fufi, 
who is the chairman of Public Services Commission. Mm. And indeed, she has also written, you understand? For her group. For the public services. So if somebody runs Maslock or somebody head of national service, will they be, repo will they be under the remit of head of Public Services Commission? It's public service. It's within the public service. So if it's classified as a public service, you know, if you go to 190, there are a lot of services that constitute the public service. Uh, can I? Yes, and you need to do that because the, 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 the names people were sending. The public services of Ghana mm -hmm. shall include the civil service, mm -hmm. the judicial service, mm -hmm. the audit service, the education service, the prison service, the parliamentary service, the health service, the statistical service, the national fire service, the customs excise and preventive service, the internal revenue service, the police service, the immigration service, and the legal service. So if a teacher goes to contest for MP, the teacher works under the education service. Yes. So technically, they can't do politics. I it, can define for the Public Services Commission. I read... But you just read it. No, no, yes. But these are public but services. But you read a part that said that somebody can be qualified for MP unless they are... I gave you the 94.3. You know all these services. Yet 94.3b categorically mentioned a number of, of services. services. The reason I would know. It didn't include the education service. No, it didn't include education so service. Teachers are doing it, it didn't include health service. So those who are complaining should go to the Public Services Commission and ask them why they are allowing these people to do politics. Exactly. But that's funny because you're saying the people working under you shouldn't do politics. I'm not but, the one... But, but I'm just explaining a second. Here we are going to change the law to say that the person who runs the assembly should be elected by political party means. Uh -huh. So I'm going to referendum now. So is that not going to make nonsense of what you're saying? I don't think so. Is he... Uh, if my boss is doing politics, why can't I do it? No. Uh, I believe that you chose to become a civil servant. Uh -huh. You chose to become a local government service staff. Mm -hmm. And it comes to rules and regulations. Mm. There's code of conduct. There's code of ethics. You decided that, look, when we... Please are advert in the papers, Ghanaian Times, Daily Graphic, uh, uh, um, Daily Guide. Mm. I chose to apply that I wanted to work within the local government service. Okay. If you got employed, you are taken to an orientation where you get to know about code of ethics, code of conduct. If you get to know that, look, why this exclusivity? No, this is why I'm infringing on my rights. Mm -hmm. I want to be within the local government service. I still want to be an active politician. If you know that, look, this thing is infringing on rights, what do you do? You bow out. Go so, to so where... the one who runs the assembly as MMDC can be partisan, but the one working within the service under him should not be. No, uh, I think that we do not understand it from this way. Wherever you go in so many parts of the world, you have... Uh, DCs over, over the most countries called the mayors mm -hmm. elected mm -hmm. when they come to your office they come with staff or they meet staff who are there Before as they professionals came. I get you as civil servants or local so governments. just like ministers with the people working exactly there. so so there's no problem but let me ask about voting for MMDCs some people think that it, even though to cure the winner takes all problem it will create another problem what, the, what is that problem Money, money in politics, well, money crazy. That what? That you pay money before the they cost vote for of you. elections. The CDD the survey mm. to win the party's primaries, mm. you need at least eighty-six thousand dollars. No, democracy is very expensive. But that should that, should that mean that we should let everything evidence be evidence bribery? I'm against it. But if it's like, but how do they get the money? You've been an experienced politician. Yeah. You know, getting money to run elections is, is difficult. Yeah. You have pay masters. If, if, you are if, coming to implement an agenda. Let's assume I, I want to be MC for Adenta, and a big contractor gives me a million cities to do it. No, if you're lucky... Who do you get all the contracts? No, if you're lucky and you are in the Metro Municipal Assemblies, you may get financiers. If you're in KE, you are alone. <laughs> How are you going to get support? Yeah, but that's the question. So I'm just asking. This is purely from your academic work. You've done research. Yes, yes. Forget about Akufuado for a minute. Forget about his promise. This idea of voting for MMDCEs, will it not bring the issue of monocracy to the local level? 
Well, I have done research on Trinidad and then part of my uh, findings had to do with election of MMDC. Is it in this book? It is there. Which page? Uh, <laughs> you tell me, I'll find it. Oh, well, let, me it. You, let me show you. <laughs> no, you mentioned it. Oh, you don't have the page in your head. Ah, so I can well, read I, it this book. book. 296 page book, I have everything here. Oh. Then I will create. No, you're, you're a shark. <laughs> you're, you're an engineer, but, doctor. No, but no. but let me tell you, why am I all for election of MMDCs? Mm -hmm. Today, in good governance, we talk about accountability. Mm -hmm. And accountability principle, we have what we call upward accountability, mm -hmm. horizontal accountability, downward accountability. Mm -hmm. When I was elect i mean when i was appointed by president kofo to be the dc of K in 2001 to a large extent you are upwardly accountable to the president who appointed you as to whether you need to serve your people well or not if you're sure that you respond positively to president kofo you're okay but today we are talking about downward accountability. How would you be able to respond to the cries of the people in KEA, in Cape Coast, in other and other areas? So one, what's most critical mm -hmm. is accountability. Somebody elected me to hold this office. Am I accountable to the person? Yes, I'm accountable to the person. Mm -hmm. Because I know for sure that if I feel one way or the other, Going so we are solving the downward accountability problem, but we're not creating one. new problems. That's our number one. We should also be able to deliver the public service that we need to deliver. Are we delivering? I am of the view that if you are elected, you can deliver better. You better. have a stronger mandate. So if you wanted to move the people from there, the wrong place, and because you have a popular mandate of being voted, you can you, move you them. You will be able to do that. Because look, there are cases where AMA chief executive want to do the right thing. The fear that president will fire. I get you. The person. Well, pre president is also looking at his or her voice. That's a good point. I'll take a break. When I come back, I have so many comments for you. I'm going to read it one question per minute. I'm going to answer each question in one minute. Uh, each question one minute. Yes, yeah, so you are doing one D, one I, I, I'm going to do one question one minute. As in, one Q, one M. Yes, one Q, one, one M. One question, one minute. This is the point of view. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Welcome back to the point of view. My guest is um, engineer Dr. Dr. Nana, Nana Atu Arthur. Yeah. He is a former central regional minister, former MP for KE. He's now the head of the local government service. He has over 50,000 people working under him. Now, I have 12 minutes mm. and I have over 10 questions. I'm going to read a question, answer it as quickly as you can. Right. Kofi Ajima in Accra. I'm aware interviews were conducted for recruitment of graduates into local government service. Mm. Please ask Dr. Atu Arthur. How far with the process? And how true are rumors that government has not given financial clearance resulting in the delay? Oh, government gave a financial clearance to recruit 2,290. We placed an advert, like I said, 52,000 applied, 40,000 were shortlisted, 5,000 were invited for interview, 2,290 have been recruited. 52,000 people applied for 2,000? They didn't know uh, how many were going to recruit. No, it just means that unemployment in Ghana is big. Very high. 52,000 people applied for 2,000 jobs. Exactly, 2,290 jobs. You know, so if you told 50,000 people to go home, you didn't give them any job. Yeah, I mean, I that, 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 we, we, we wow. had... A so you have financial clearance. Have you employed the 2,200? We had finished. In fact, just two, three days ago, go to our website. We have um, posted them. What we did was that we asked the applicants to select preferred regions, except three regions, Greater Accra, Ashanti, and Isin, because they are choked. And so the remaining regions, in our 16 regions today, 6 minus 3, 13. So we all prefer regions. We have sent the, uh, those we actually employed to the various regional coaching councils to offload them to the various uh, districts. So are they working as I talk to you? No, they, they are reporting on the 11th. What kind of people, what kind of work have they been employed to do? What kind of positions? We have as statisticians, as programmers, those are on IT. We have HR. We have procurement, we have environmental health analysts, hey. we have environmental health officers. All these people? Yes. 2,290. As under 2Bs. How many environmental officers? I'm interested in that one because the, of the sanitation. Uh, the, out of the 2,290, I believe that uh, environmental health will be about 340. 
So at least one dish you should have in one each because they are 260. No, they we have them there, so we are just beefing uh, up. Yeah, beefing up. Prince Henry Kofredi, a good evening, Ben. In 2018 budget, the president made some allocation for sanitation and also promised to outdoor sanitation guards to help curb the sanitation problems in the country. Where are the sanitation guards promised and the monies allocated for that project? One uh, minute. Is this question coming to me? Every question here is to you. No, but if he says that uh, uh, the president promised and the president... That because he's going to do that through the, your assemblies. No. And, and even though you're not local government minister, where you sit, you will know. Because he says, allocation no, for sanitation I think that, guards. I think so that, the guards are working in your service. No, we don't have sanitation guards now. We don't have. We have employed health analysts, environmental health analysts. We have employed environmental health officers. I mean, we don't call them guards. But if the guards are to do the summer summon that perhaps uh, the president talked about, then we have them. We have recruited from entire health officers. Well, the, 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 last the, the man said guard, and I, the budget said guard. So you have to ask me, I don't know. That, that is so the, you don't know guard, you know health officers. We call them health officers. We have not had environmental guards in the MMDs yet. Good. So the answer to your question is that no. Ben, you have a well-informed person on your show tonight. Why can't we have regional ministers and MMDCs elected instead of appointment by the president? Please share some light on this. I think well, 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 I think that I talked about the MMDCs election. Fantastic. I mean, there's something to me we have not even mentioned. You know, uh, when we are a DC, by the stroke of President Penn, you can be fired. You know that. And so there are times you sit down because you have you don't have security of tenure. You begin to think that do I even need to sit down to plan what we call the long term plan? Mm. No, me myself, I don't know when I'm leaving. Okay. How can I have a long term plan? You understand know what I mean? But with this election, I've talked about accountability, I've talked about reducing winner takes all, I've talked about uh, security of tenure. Okay, we, we, another question. Ask your guest what has happened to the decentralization by devolution of the health and education sectors? I think it's ongoing. Um, I am aware that there's a bill in uh, Parliament that soon basic education will be fully decentralized. Uh, the health one, the basic level, is also being discussed. I believe that uh, the two, that is education and health, basic level mm. will soon be decentralized. This same person asks, is there a technical, so is there a manual that guides the operation of technical officers at MMDAs? If there are, what are some of the things contained in them? What, 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 what was the question again? Is there a manual that, we have a manual. that well, guides have, operations of technical officers? If we have, uh, and if there are, what are some of the things contained in the manual? We have, we have a manual. Bring fact, the manual. Every, every uh, <laughs> class, when I say class, yes. talk about procurement class. They talk about every class has a manual that guides... Okay. We, I mean, uh, the, they, are, they, are bring, they are bringing a manual for inspection. Let, let, let me see. <laughs> I, can, I can give one of the manuals, Human Resource Operation Manual. Is this the one for technical or something, something? Yeah, please, for, this is for Human Resource. For Metropolitan Municipal, Local Government Service Secretariat. So yes. the guy says, what is contained in them? Yes, yeah, so if you care to read, if you have time now, let me read so that we, we, we have only five minutes. We don't have time. I just wanted a part. Yes, if you have time, maybe let me, the guy, let me give him. My number. The guy can come to our office tomorrow for a copy. So we'll be able okay, to... Okay, I'll come to this. More questions. Yes. Um, hello, Bernard. As the engineer, why people are being made to pay 400, pay 4,000 cities before being offered placement in the local government service in the ongoing recruitment exercise? Um, yes, this question has no name. But, but, but... Why are they paying 4,000? To whom? Who are they paying the 4,000 to? Questioner, to whom? Yeah, to whom? So if the person... To, to your people? I don't think it's true. But I will have, you investigate it? No, but I have recruited 2,290. Maybe your guys who are at the reception are collecting... It's not them. possible. Do you, have guys CCTV, are do you have CCTV camera? Oh. Or they are doing, is it online recruitment? No, not online recruitment. Uh, I told you, these 5,000 who went for interview at ILGS, mm -hmm. it's a local government studies. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked through the interview report. And 2,290 have been uh, recruited. If anybody paid 50 cities to anyone in the service, including myself, that person should okay. come up. This is another one. My name is Aram from Legon. Now, this person, kindly ask the head of local government service, why job seekers are being asked to pay 4,000 cities before being offered employment? Secondly, 
Why have people who have not attended official interview being offered jobs at the expense of qualified ones? This one has the name, Aram from Lego. Aram, show me the evidence. Who did you pay your 4,000 to? Aram, uh, have you given 4,000? But you think if I, can, if I pay 4,000, I'll come and tell you. No, but if Aram has paid 4,000 to me, he can't you. No, we are not accusing you. We are saying they are no, paying No, but service. Who, is, who did he pay the money to? But you have 50,000 workers. So yeah, 50,000, if you go pay some... 50,000 workers, you select anyone, the cleaner, and give 4,000 Ghana cities to them. But to do what? What process have you put in place to ensure that nobody is tricked to pay any money? You know what we've done? Tell me. From my chief director, there is only one person, in fact, a very hard, young, hard working guy, Peter. He's the only one who generates these appointment letters. Peter. Peter. He's the only one. For the whole Ghana. No, in my office. Peter what? I don't mention. But Peter is... Peter. The, Peter. Uh, Peter. He's the only one who so generates this. And his office, his office, nobody, nobody, can. nobody can enter Peter's office. Peter. Peter. <laughs> you understand? And nobody can... And then I... Hey, am, go and look for Peter. And I'm the only <laughs> Peter one... Peter cannot be bribed. And I'm the only one... Wow. Who signs appointment letters? So if if Aram has a parents, you come to Peter. I don't think Peter will even it's accept. No. Okay. I've known this guy. It's a big man. And the guy is such More a person questions. that. Bernard Nana happens to be one of the few members in this government that I really respect. His decision to deal with civil servants who do partisan politics while in service is the right thing, which I think he should continue. From Chris Chris Akwetiman, greetings to Honorable Fuseni Isa. Bernard tell Atu Atta that nothing is happening at the assemblies. He should come to Dunkwa often and see things for himself. <laughs> this assembly is broke. Let us vote for the MCs. Our planning officers are lazy or filthily corrupt. They take money and allow people to build haphazardly. Very sad. Grace Ajiman in the crop on. It's no, very no, sad. No, um, have you gone to Dunkwa often? I've been, I've been to very many. How many have you visited since you took over? Since I took over, out of the 260 today, I've gone to about 125. And oh, wow. Yes. 125. In yes. person. In person. Not just uh, no. drive through. Myself, Go my, there. No, myself, my chief director, with one or two directors with me. 125. With, yes. With one of my PAs. Will you clear the 260 before election 2020? I want to do that, but wow. at times we are challenged. You know, there are meetings here in Accra. You are going here. You are, so, so when you go, what do you do? do, you, what do you, when you I meet, meet all the staff. I first meet management and then meet all the staff, engage them. Wow. I, need to, I need to share my vision. I need to explain some of these um, um, issues that we are dealing with. Yeah. They need to understand. If you have questions, you need to know where our staff are working, mm. you know, their working environment. I went to Dafia Mabusie is at DBI in Upper West. From there, we're going to Lambusier and Wenchao and others. And if you look at some of our staff where they live, you need to so you have to see for yourself more questions bernard good evening with all due respect to you and engineer doctor what he's saying about planning officers in various assemblies is only seen in books mm -hmm. not in practice he should get to the ground and investigate samuel from koferidia well well i think that samuel may have his uh views his opinion but i'm talking about what i know of well, they may not be the best but i think that they are mm -hmm. doing very well Good evening, man. Ask him why one can be upgraded to the level of diploma grade of pay if that person was once appointed with certificate of SHS as a revenue collector and have attained a diploma certificate. Why that person cannot be? So you, have, you take somebody as SHS person mm. in the course of his work, he attains a, a diploma or another certificate. Mm. Why won't you upgrade the person? It's well, like his entry level certificate is what you are using to pay him. No, no, no. We do. You can't. We, we have a system we call upgrade and conversion. For instance, somebody came in with the SHS degree has been, uh, he has worked, mm. uh, he has also read a program leading to a diploma certificate. Or so this is not true? That's not true. Final question. Ask Doc if NADMO officials are part of the Public Service Directive on elections. I don't know about that one. The NADMO officers, I don't know where they belong. They are not civil. They are not local governments. I don't know where... They are they, the ones, the politicians. Where, who, I don't know where NADMO officers belong. I think this 30% this appointee of... Uh, appoint, uh, appointees in MMDC is... Assemblies. Don't you think it should be scrapped? Oh, I, it's in my book. It's in your book. Page 174. You, hey, you, now they know the page. I am saying that if that is where I belong, in the sense that. 174. Yeah, in the sense that if MMDCs have been elected, for instance, MPs, 
Do you have to appoint this in parliament? No. So if MDCs have been elected, why should you also go for government appointees? Where can we buy this book? Where can we get this book? I have a, long, a number of copies there if you will need even 50 tomorrow. We I need can, to read it. I it's called Unfinished Business. Yeah. I have Unfinished Business. Because we have a lot of no, business we, within a service. I even have Unfinished Business. We have to come back because I have okay. little questions I couldn't ask you. But are we done? Yes, because our money is finished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, engineer, Dr. Nana Tuatha, brilliant man, talking to him about something he's very passionate about. If you guys want me to bring him back, let me know. Send me a, a comment with point of view. Maybe we'll interview him after Christmas or next year to see if he'll still be as optimistic. Maybe to educate us around the voting for MMDCs. My name maybe is we'll, we'll come just before the referendum. Brilliant. To do another one. My name is Ben Adamble. Thank you for watching The Point of View. Stay with us. Good night. Point of View is brought to you in association with Stambic Bank, moving forward.